So I'd like to introduce Jacqueline Anderson, Jackie, um, who has been doing a very interesting PhD project, um, and she's been doing this at the at UCLan, University of Central Lancashire. Uh, and I'm very, very interested to hear her present these results. So, over. What else should I say about you as your? Um, I've, got, I've been a political activist in the past, I set up the reality party with Best from Happy Mondays, and that's the other side of me, apart from doing my research. So, yeah, so yeah, you don't just do the dancing, you help other people to dance. Well, no, no I'd love to be able to say that. <laughs> By providing a platform. Yeah, okay, lovely. Thank you very much. So you don't need that. Okay. Right. Uh, thanks for this, for the privilege of doing this. This is the first time I've presented my PhD research at a conference, so bear with me. Um, great privilege to be invited to do this. Um, really pleased that you've all been involved in my research, and um, I'd like to share some of it with you. Um, I've been a member of the psychedelic trans community in the UK for 19 years. Before that, I found dance um, as something was, that was not religious, but my, my full belief system from Acid House in 88. And I've been part of dancing ever since. Um, about seven years ago, I decided that I wanted to start chronicling this wonderful community that we're part of. It's a community with all the faults that any community will have, but we were living through uh, a transformatory community, whether we liked it or not, and it was changing us. Um, so I started with my master's to write about North Wales side culture, uh, as I'm going to call it. But now with my PhD, I'm looking at the whole of the UK side culture and all the different regional groupings within it. Uh, Nikki's asked me to take out um, some of the things about spirituality and beliefs, uh, and I've done it slightly differently. I've got a couple of slides sort of introducing you to some of the ideas behind um, uh, side trans culture and emergent spiritualities. Um, but I'm presenting uh, today some um, raw data for you to look at and, and have a think and to be inspired. Uh, as inspired as I was, I didn't have any idea that people really did believe there were such ideals um, behind what we were doing. Um, and one of the big things within UK side culture is uh, prohibitions and the, the problems with the police were still seen as a rave and we have to stay hidden, stealth, loose lips, make sure that you know, some of our events uh, people don't know about, like the police, and we're still under that, that, that culture. And um, even though we go out to places, you know, liminal spaces out in the middle of nowhere, with my masters I found out that that was out of necessity, not necessarily choice because it's the only place the police can get to us if we're just near snow. Um, risk assessments, night time, police ain't going up there. Right, anyway, so uh, I've called it Jack, I'm only dancing, because uh, quite a few of the respondents to my research have just said that, and it's <laughs> that I'm just dancing. Uh, within that is a belief system, I believe, but um, this westernised need to, to add frameworks and belief systems on top of things is something I think we need to discuss more. Um, believing in the energy of dance, there's some slides at the end from some respondents who um, have, have indicated just about that power of the nature of dance, which we mustn't forget about. In the psychedelic renaissance, whatever it is, um, I think dance needs to be kept at the forefront in that trinity with dance and community, dancing together uh, with the music. It's, it's paramount, it's... it's it's a benefit to all, and I think it has been in a timeless manner for centuries and thousands of years, maybe. Um, I have a mantra I used to put on a festival called Raven Shame and Gathering, which was from a dancer's perspective. And my research is from the dance floor, from a dancer's perspective. I try to keep it from that point of view to make sure what we're doing down there in often grubby, dark areas dancing um, is taken account of and noted. And one of my uh, taglines for the festival is to dance together, to trance psychedelically. 
And that's something I do believe in, and I think it's very important, and we mustn't forget about it. Um, right, let's go. Right, so uh, I'm very quickly going to go through some of these things that relate, and that's uh, some of the ideas on belief and spirituality. Uh, beliefs also include commun uh, community participation, contribution is a big one, small communities like this, like hunter gatherer communities, very egalitarian, and there's a great amount of beliefs and values attached to that uh, that's very similar to Sanchez's scene. Um, there's also a lot of belief in dance and energy, like I've said, and um, beliefs in spirits, nature, and that includes mushrooms. Um, that's, that's quite hidden, but it's, it's pretty evident in some of the motifs and symbology. Uh, so I'll have a couple of slides, and then I'll move on to looking at the, some of the participants' ideas, direct quotes. I do intend this to be in open access data for everyone, because even though people answered my questions, they provided a massive amount of information way beyond my questions. Um, we'll start off with looking at a bit of theory. I don't know if any of you are aware of the psychedelic trans culture, but um, some of the ideas, such as Chamaki, is that uh, psychedelic dance music is imbued with certain parrot religious qualities, that we're performing rituals and ceremonies, and that dancing together has this religiosity to it. Healers also says that participants are practicing a self shamanizing um, a potential where they become their own healers, seeking escape from alienation and a soul-destroying normality. So, nice big and idealistic, and uh, there's some element of truth to that, that's my personal view. Uh, Self-shamanising, the idea is that there's no particular shame in side chance, and people are really quite strong about that uh, on the whole. Uh, we might have shamanic practices, but they don't particularly have any have a set individual shame. Uh, uh, Graham says that the movement hosts an expressive spirituality where the flame may be gutted but yet glows in the rave scene that expresses a deep sense of freedom, recognition of others and the self and could be seen as a new gnosis. Um, and there are those elements there and there are some believers in that, but not all, as you'll see in a bit. He uh, agrees, he says that participants are expressing spirituality and are seeking liberation from the contaminating effects of society and culture, and they seek genuine expression. Um, a lot of the respondents even find that they are persecuted uh, by their family members in the, what they call the mainstream society for having uh, a different lifestyle. Right, so DeAndrea indicates that there's a sacred dance space that we create. He indicates that the dance floor space becomes infused with a sacredness that is a safe and positive place for participants to exist in another self and return on their transcendent journey. Right? Big ideas, it can happen, I've experienced it. Uh, there are other ideas too. And the idea of these potent luminoid spaces that we go to, some of the pictures you'll see are for, from actual events that I've been to, and uh, the picture on the right-hand side is a picture of us uh, putting up the uh, crow's nest for a pirate ship we were building on a moor in North Wales. And there's a whole story to that in itself, especially when the Forestry Commission turned up. Um, so these liminal spaces are constructed of potent liminal space with the potential to generate intense feelings of awe and social bonds, establishing this collective effervescence unparalleled, unparalleled in normal society, this coming together, this belonging, this working together and contributing has been quite phenomenal for my experience over the last 19 years. Um, right, the, but there are others who indicate that it's a bit of a myth of unity, this myth of community coming together, that really people are just going out there to take loads of drugs, it's a drug fest and to party. Um, Olufsen indicates that at their destination, Ravers claim to find a world of harmony, equality and communality, a place similar to humanity in its early tribal stages, according to Ravers, but diametrically opposed to the modern world. Reynolds also points out that the myth of unity is just a myth. Ravers can be criticised for not following through on their goals of community. And there's quite a lot of uh, uh, respondents' feedback indicating just how well integrated their beliefs are and following through with principles, even though it's very hard to track down side trans principles and beliefs and practices, because like herding cats, 
Um, they have been following through, similar to Burning Man principles, and there has been purchasing of land and, and looking at a proper community living off-grid. Right, so, um, here's some of the comments. Um, there is ritual. These are from... Wait a minute, I think it's coming out, GAP. I think it's coming out. Um, right, so these are the comments from some of the respondents. Um, have a think about them. Um, that there is ritual formed around separation from regular day-to-day -day life and then a space of liminality where it's chaos and we're near the here or there. Uh, some of the respondents have sometimes a, a knowledge, uh, an understanding beyond me, um, and that's one of their, their ideas. Another one is, but then I really do want to go back to my regular life. So they're going out to places where they're neither here and there, out of choice. And then what I've done is I've reintegrated a lot of the lessons into my daily experience. So the difference between the two is not crazily stuck. Like I said before that, you know, is it, is it really just a myth? Is it just going out into the woods to party for a few days? But generally, as the years increase, and especially since po uh, the pandemic, I've found that people have been more and more integrating uh, into their own life. Um, this is um, a picture from uh, a fairy pirates in North Wales, and it's just to show you uh, about the community coming together. It's a little bit man-heavy though, isn't it? Uh, we're putting together the pirate ship. One of the ceremonies that happens, and it's very practical because we need somewhere to dance under so we're not going to get wet because the weather's a little unstable in Wales. And this is us putting up the pirate ship. And the pirate ship is often, some of the wood is already uh, with us, brought in on trailers. Uh, there's a ceremony usually on the Saturday to put up the actual ship with, with, this is a different place. The last picture you showed was on the wall. This is in uh, a forestry commission area. And it's, it's very bonding for everybody. This, was, this one was 2013, the previous one was 2012. That's how long we've been putting that ship up. We've now got our own land, so we don't have to have the police coming to take us down. It's very difficult for the police to come and take down the pirate ship once it's up, and they just have to leave on the Monday. Um, I once had the Forestry Commission guy come up to me with a clipboard and a walkie-talkie, and he said, how do we report this? I said, what? He said, well, what are you doing? I said, we're putting a pirate ship. And he said, I don't want to radio it in. You know? We've had lots of, lots of fun. Often the Welsh police uh, usually enjoy something other than being the Royal Task Force. Uh, during lockdown, they put on a party, and the police came along to arrest everyone, find them £10,000, and a copper said to the organiser, who's the organiser of this event? And he said, Lord Shiva. And the policeman said, who's Lord Shiva? And that's been sampled into a side track, which is really funny because, you know, it's, what, what can we say, you know? Anyway, um, that photo shows about participation, contribution, and at the heart of everything we do is to dance. This is a community at the heart of dancing and it's certainly what's attracted me. You know, I spent most of my life as an outsider in society and uh, loving dancing, I like trees as well. So here you go, I'm at home. Um, I don't have much of a family life. I'm autistic and uh, I really suffer in normal mainstream society and in the science world, I'm more normal than anyone else. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so anyway, um, yes, uh, this is another comment. I truly believe that this culture is based on connections and contributions. Everybody contributes, whether they see it or not. Uh, participation in dancing is often seen as the most important thing. Also, participation just to be there. We need people there to buy the tickets and to help. The whole thing, the ship, the catering, the toilets. We have some toilets uh, called Dr. Pooh and the Turdis which are drop toilets, and don't, don't ask me what the police thought about that. Uh, so it's all oh, that creativity, that this, you know, it's, it's inspiring, dancing together in the woods, and it leads to so much, living. probably everything we believe in, anyone here, you're going to believe in some of the things that we're trying to achieve. It's a community, it has its problems, fabulously amount terrible problems going on. Um, I interviewed someone 
a producer from Israel who said, you take 500 people out into the desert for four or five days of party and taking hallucinogenic drugs, you're going to have some problems, not only in the party, but after, and sometimes permanently. So as organisers, you have to be aware of that. Um, and there's, there's usually a great uh, harm reduction on psychiatry trained to help and make sure you do lots of different tasks. Right? I've never dug the drop toilets yet, though. You know, some excuse. Um, right, so somebody said, I truly believe that this culture is based on connections and contributions. Everybody contributes, whether they see it or not. Participation dancing is a form of religion. It evokes a sense of spiritual deep knowing and sacred connection. The Sightrans culture and scene is built on our support and contribution to each other and our endeavours. Um, as I said, it's got its problems, but there's probably four or five land, uh, land sites that I now know of in England alone where we've purchased the land to get past the police issues. We become the landowners. So when I put Raven, Sh Raven Shaman on in Cumbria, that was um, a side trans uh, dancer friend of mine I met in 2004 who bought the land deliberately. Uh, they're all pretty hidden. Um, I've just told you about it now. Uh, um, and, and so we have to keep it like that. There are layers within the side trans community in England, so that um, um, there's a difference between lots of ways, and that necessity of being a newcomer. And once you become trusted, or you, will bec you become, this is mushroom pickers terminology. If you're a writer, you're probably going to find yourself being invited to some of the more secret events. There are right ones when you're mushroom picking, and there are wrong ones. And if you're a really good mushroom picker, you get, eventually get to the point where at night, in the dark, without a torch, you can pick mushrooms without wrong, one wrong one. Because if you pick one wrong one, you, you've just, you know, buggered up your batch. And that is the philosophy um, that I picked up, all the philosophies behind mushroom pickers. I hung out with them for about 20 years in Wales, and I learned how to pick without any wrong ends, eventually. But it applies to people. Sometimes the wrong ends tend to try and grow near the, uh, the right ends and even start to look like them. Uh, they, they sort of adapt. And you've got to be really aware. You've got to look after people. Um, and we, we can't have negative energy, uh, particularly on the dance floor. Um, so this, this idea that participation is spiritual in itself, sorry, I'm really dry. Um, what you can see in the picture on the right is uh, a ceremony. In 2017, we decided we needed to have opening ceremonies. And I'm quite sceptical in terms of telepathy, uh, psychic ability, seeing spirits out in the woods and things like this. And we found ourselves in 2017 having strimmed down this open area in the woods, a stone circle, inside another stone circle with a burial chamber. <laughs> oh, wow, it's great, nice. You know, we've partied on it, you know, it's drug fest, the whole thing, right? And those of us who stayed behind for the litter pick for the week found that there were issues, uh, bells ringing and things falling and hurting people. And it was felt as a community that from now on, from the next year, we'll have a little sort of Gnostic amalgamation of um, uh, an opening ceremony. So that's us, that's me at the front there with my staff. Um, of this community in North Wales, probably about five or six hundred hours we've been meeting since 20, 2009 I first met the people. And my partner helped build the stage at the back, uh, so that's part of his contribution. Uh, we also work the gate, me and my partner, we can use QR codes and anything else that comes up. So that participation is really, really vital. I've never been able to participate. I don't really have much of a family apart from the kids. And this allows me to feel all that is missing in this disconnected society. And that is there for a lot of people. Um, often when you turn up and you're new at uh, a side chance event like this, I mean, everybody knows each other, so if you're new, you can stand out like a sore thumb. And generally, you'll get asked around the fire, uh, so what's brought you here? And it's usually some, some conflict in your life or, or some, something that's pushed you and you found this, this family where you're not uh, just a misfit anymore. Anyway, participation can be just being there at a gathering. This is uh, what my respondents have said. Participation feels somewhat spiritual, almost like an awakening. Likewise, without the crowds coming and dancing, the parties just wouldn't happen. Parties. 
Participation in dancing and sitting around the fire means for me a connection to something sacred. I'm not sure what this sacred feeling is, but it's a very deep knowing. Oh. All right. <laughs> so we'll get on to the important bit. Dancing in nature. Everybody likes being outside. It's less sound uh, reflection. You get purer noise. It's great dancing in a forest or a ball. So uh, you are in a community when you're dancing outside. And you're embodied in a group of people. So you forget about rational conditioning in the nine to five life. I do feel when I'm outside, I'm going into a more primal part of myself. My preference is to be out in a natural setting because it always has more of that healing effect. Got ourselves a nice marquee to sit in. Um, outdoors is magical. Spiritual connection and self-expansiveness occur. Yes, I feel the energy and the shared vulnerability and the oneness that comes from being there together. Um, in terms of dancing nature more, it's the dancing that's the important bit. Dancing together unites us. Being outdoors makes me feel more natural. I feel like we're no longer people at these things, but we become animals again. The concept of a person is an illusion, that we are animals and that our lives are somehow above all that. We are primates who like to dance. I'm going dead fast here. So some people think it's really spiritual, that dancing and releasing is spiritual and tribal. It's a shamanic technology in a contemporary setting, very spiritual for me. There you go. And some people say it's free from belief. Some people are saying they read too much in it, few of us are shaman. That side trans experiences are seen as psychedelic and not subscribing to any particular belief system, it's a very westernised idea, but rather to be free from, to have a lack of belief. A side trans self is not spiritual and has no beliefs attached to it as such. So, typical side trans is you can never pin them down. But some people are really fervently that there are no beliefs uh, and it's just reality. That the significance of reality is enough for me. I don't need to decorate with more than that. That's all I need. The lived experience for me is to dance and rather to leave the pair, leave religion as a pair of warm boots um, at the door so that we have a space free from any dogma and belief. We're just there to dance. That's the, where the idea of Jack and Only dancing comes from, which people say to me over and over again. Um, so religion goes out the window at gatherings. It's seen as important that that happens. People have a range of diverse individual beliefs, but this isn't that place. This is where you put everything aside and you dance. Um, it's, uh, the, uh, people say it's important to have an attitude of non-belief or keen seeking out when you enter this space where you'll be able to find meaning that is useful and valuable. <laughs> I know we said that. There's also the accusation of spiritual appropriation going on, which I won't go into too much, but you know, there's no shame in there. People get really mad at the appropriation of, of culture, which, you know, it's all there. And back to my final slide. Have we got time to go through it? The idea is just to dance. Uh, dance is very important, even going beyond the psychedelics. The importance of gathering in the community, being out of your head, not necessarily by drugs, by becoming one with the community, the music, and everything that's beyond. Um, so I want people to, to be, able to be taking into account the importance of dance, the importance of dancing together in a community, uh, preferably outside, uh, because it's, it's amazing. There's nothing quite like being um, in the woods for four or five days um, and realizing just how at one you are and grounded you are in the woods. Even if it's a bit cold in Wales, um, but it doesn't matter, he still takes shoes off. And yes, the dance floor is a sacred place. Um, I think that's it. I think it's pretty much repeated what I was saying. There's me dancing. Um, yeah. There's, there's a lot of people saying that they know how, not that one. I say, oh, why do I take pictures of Sisaloni all the time? Um, but um, uh, anyway, um, there's a sharing of energy. I can't get to that slide. So many people, so many respondents said, we share energy on the dance floor. That is the language. And when you get built up with energy like concrete, and there's a respect on the dance floor where, you know, especially the elders will maybe sow a little bit of energy to someone. It's nice and positive. And as you feel as you can feel it. And so a little bit back. And that happens. Somebody needs to research what we're doing with that. But you actually can feel it. You can feel that energy. Some people can see it. Um, you know, so some people see the actual sound as water. And lots of other things. Right, anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Here's me again. 
uh, dancing with spirits. Some people say they meet up with spirits. Some people very much believe in nature. And somebody who's going to be presenting soon says, for me, uh, the spirits I normally connect with is the plants. They are the ambassadors of the vegetable uh, kingdom and they facilitate communication. And it's the plants running the show. I haven't got time to say anything else about it, but deep in the heart of a lot of the symbols and a lot of the decor within a lot of hidden side chance events, mushrooms, they're everywhere. You go to a more mainstream event like, like Noisley and they're not as evident. It's almost as if the decor parallels how hidden the events are as well. But it's all there. And generally, we're all mushroom pickers, in one way or the other. Not anymore. <laughs> right, OK. That's it. That's me done. There it is. Thank okay. you.